When using a 0% promo credit card, what percentage of the balance should be factored into the expense to pay it down while focusing on the primary debt payoff targets? Wonderful question, Christina. So Christina says, what percentage, right? of the 0% promo card. So let's say, um, let's say we all got approved tomorrow for a $10,000 credit card, 0% for 12 months on um, purchases. Okay. Depending on your four major numbers, your cash flow times 12 and what the focus is, what I like to do is look at your monthly bills. So we're looking at expenses, right? This number here, we're looking at expenses. And I say, all right, what are some bills that we can switch from monthly to annual and save money? Just by switching, you know? Like for example, I use Kajabi to host my online courses and I was paying like 160 a month or whatever. I'd, and I said, hey, can I pay annual and save money? They said, yes, boom, I save money on the bill alone, right? Let's say this credit card has 2% in cash back rewards. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice for some reason, it's terrible. So. $10,000 credit card, 0% for 12 months on purchases, you get 2% cash back. So I only want to run bills that I can pay annually that'll save me money on the bill itself and get cash back rewards and the bill can be paid with a credit card with no fees, right? Once I've gathered those bills, um, for me, Christina, I still use the 66% number. So in this case, 6,600, I might go as high as 7K. I usually like to leave some space in the credit card. That's just me personally. For the next 12 months, I will pay the minimum payment until the 11th month and then I pay it off in full and then get another 0% card and rinse and repeat this dramatically increases your debt payoff timeline when you add a credit card to run your daily bills and then you got a second credit card on 0% pr promo that you float from year to year. You just keep floating the expense, right? Keep floating it, keep floating it. And then you got your main debt tool, your HELOC, your PLOC, your all-in-one loan, whatever it is. Considering the benefit of reward points from using a credit card as my debt tool, any reason you think it would be good to consider opening a HELOC to use instead? Yes, William, why not have both, right? So with my scenario earlier, you noticed how I had the credit card and I had the HELOC, right? So you want both. You want to use the credit card. The credit card helps you offset your interest on the HELOC. So let's say HELOC main debt tool. This is where all your income goes in and out, right? All your income goes in and out and the expenses, right? In and out. Well, you already know you're getting charged an interest rate on the HELOC no matter what. We need to offset that interest. We have to make it go to zero, nothing. So with a credit card, we get charged zero for as long as we pay the credit card off in full on the statement on the due date, right? Well, that's very easy to do if all we're running through the credit card are your known monthly bills, your known monthly bills. So it's great to have both, my friend. So would I start by getting a HELOC, Aaron Hernandez, um, so now for those watching, I share with you a singular case study, real scenario. In order to figure out what debt tool I should acquire, it's important for you to know what your options are. Okay. So 
if you're brand new to the concept, we could potentially start off with a credit card. It's easy to understand. Most people understand how to use a credit card. The next tool is a personal line of credit. It can be unsecured or secured. Usually, or all the time, a secured is going to be a lower interest rate. But you need to lock up some capital, so you have to be okay with doing that. The third tool is a HELOC. First or second position. The next one is an all-in-one loan, right? The next one is a cash value policy. This requires capital. This requires capital to obtain. The secured, you need capital. Credit card, you need credit. HELOC, first or second, you need equity plus credit. P-lock, credit. Understand? These are your options. Credit card, P-lock, HELOC, all-in-one loan, cash value policy. Denzel, oh, I don't know, which one do I get? Oh, oh. Well, you got to watch. Get on my email newsletter. I'm going to start sending you velocity banking pregame work. Here's what you need to know. Here's are your, here are what your options are. Here's what a line of credit is. Here's how you get a, here's how you find a line of credit. Here's how you, you know, evaluate credit lines and know the interest rate and all that good stuff. So there are the options. Hopefully that helps. So when paying back a HELOC, interest is added every time you put money back in because the balance changes. Yes. Okay? Yes. Because the numbers going up and down because you're putting money in, taking money out, you get charged daily based on whatever the balance is. But Lori, the thing is, with the simple interest, like if I currently owe, you know, back to that example, I owe 18,000, I'm getting charged $2.70 a day. So on the first, I owe 18,000. On the second, I'm still going to owe 18,000, but I'm going to get charged another 270. On the 3rd, I'm still going to owe 18,000, but I'm going to get charged another 270. 270, 270, 270 will not show up until you pay the bill. That's very important to understand because with some types of debts you can get charged simple interest compounded daily. For example, with a credit card, let's say you did a cash advance on a credit card. Credit cards are the worst type, types of debt to have because it charges you simple interest compounded like day by day. That's why when you read the credit card statement, you only owe, say, five grand, and it says it's going to take you 17.5 years to pay it off if you just pay the monthly payment, right? The reason why it takes forever is because the monthly payment is just paying the interest that is constantly getting tacked on. It's like it never really pays it off. So in that case, amortized is better because amortized is the interest is already predicted it's already laid out through all the payments on the amortization schedule right so when you are getting a HELOC or a PLOC the interest gets calculated throughout the days for however long you owe 18,000 but it's not like you owe eighteen thousand and two dollars and seventy cents, and then on the second day it's eighteen thousand five dollars 
and 40 cents, right? It, that's not how you get charged interest because if that was the case, we don't want that, right? We don't want that type of, you know, the interest adds on throughout the each and every day. We only get charged interest when we make a payment based on however much we owe from day to day. Okay, very important to know. How long will it take to pay off the $20,000 chunk? Depending on their four major numbers, their income could go higher, their cash flow could go up. Typically, the range is between six and nine months. What happens is you'll reach a point where the line of credit hits zero, but you still have to pay bills out of the line of credit. So whenever you hit zero on a line of credit, doesn't actually mean you paid it off. You still have to pay your bills, so you're gonna be extracting money, but that doesn't mean we can't make our next chunk. Because of the amount of space that's in the HELOC, the only thing I'm concerned about getting to is close to the zero number. I don't actually have to pay off the debt tool before I make the next chunk. This is what gives us a huge leverage over debt snowball is people get caught up when they do the math. They're like, Denzel, if I do a 20K chunk and my cash flow is $1,400, $20,000 divided by $1,400, $20,000 divided by $1,400 would take 14.2 months to pay off the line of credit. How on earth is Denzel saying that we can pay off the line of credit in six to nine months if her cash flow is only $1,400? That makes no mathematical sense. Well, what everybody is forgetting is the fact that I'm dumping 5,521 every single month into the line of credit. And I've got $1,500 a month that's floating on a credit card that I'm not getting charged any interest. And the fact that I shifted pre-existing debt, I didn't add any new debt. I shifted pre-existing debt, I'm getting charged a lesser rate. The whole point is about reducing our borrowing costs to zero and consolidating the debt and adding velocity to it. So if my 5,000 is sitting in the 20, it's only gonna take me roughly six to nine months to bring the balance down to maybe a five to 6K range. Mind you, 35,000 was the debt. Minus that from 20K, you're down to 15. In her case, the balance was at 14,000. 14,000 and some change. We're still making our monthly payment of 209. In those six to nine months, she keeps paying 209, 209, 209, 209. So the balance comes down. My credit limit, let's say in the seventh month, my balance is at, I don't know, $6,000 or $7,000 in the seventh month of doing velocity banking after that first chunk. Well, if I only owe 13,000 on the loan that I tackled and I have a $40,000 HELOC, my chunk max, 66%, was the 26,000. She originally chunked 20. She can just do a $13,000 chunk. Why wait to go to zero, consolidate the rest of that 6.63 to the 5.25, which is actually a lot less than 5.25. You see where I'm going with this? So I get to the 209 faster than just paying 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. I'm, I'm there for 14 months, right? It's different, it's ridiculous. Link your PLOC to your checking account so you can hold your money in your line of credit without transferring money out for bills. This is another interesting way to maximize your borrowing costs. So what Cedric said does not apply to every debt tool. Not every bank will allow this, okay? Not every bank will allow this. Let me be very clear. 
Not every bank will allow this, but if you ask the right questions, you can connect your checking to the, the P-lock or HELOC and you might get a card with the debt tool. They give you a card, like a checking and a routing and everything, just like a checking account, right? So with some debt tools, now, for example, with an all-in-one loan or a first position HELOC, off the bat, you no longer need a checking account because you can pay everything out of the HELOC so if you can pay everything out of the HELOC, guess what? We don't have to do this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We can just do direct deposit straight to the debt tool. How cool is that? Straight to the debt tool. Do you know how much more dollars per day we're saving? That's $1, $2, $3, $1, $2, That reduces our borrowing costs to nothing. And then people wonder, well, you know, how the hell does that work? Right? They're not doing the right math. So Cedric, thanks for adding that value there. Totally forgot about it. But that is a great, great addition to finding the best debt tool you can possibly find. Finding the best debt tool you can possibly find is definitely one where you can uh, link your, your, your checking accounts. And in some cases, you may not even need to, uh, link it if they allow direct deposit straight to the debt tool. What are the HELOC rates today? The credit rates do depend on your credit score and what you get access to. Me preferably, I prefer to have a personal line of credit under 10%, a home equity line of credit under 4% or under 5%. Those are like the best in my opinion. The max that I will go on a personal line of credit is 15%. I don't like to go any higher than 15%. In some cases, it doesn't even make sense to be playing around with a 15% line of credit. You're really not gonna make that much damage. We would be better off trying to build your credit, position us for a better debt tool later on, later on. What debt do you recommend attacking first? Installment loans, high payment, lower interest versus high interest credit cards. In most cases, Lee, in most cases, not all the time. This depends on our four major numbers, what your goals are, what we're trying to do, your cash flow, and all that good stuff. But in most cases, we start with credit card debt. We then go to the installment loans, car loans, student loans, and we finish it off with the mortgage. That's usually how it goes down in most of my cases. Now, if you have a credit card at a 12% rate and you owe 2,500 on that, but you have a $6,000 amortized loan and the payment is 350 a month and you're paying 15%, we might go after that instead, right? So it really depends on what we're talking. We have to see all the numbers. We gotta lay everything out and do the math. But in most cases, it's usually the credit cards because people don't have their credit right, so they don't have a debt tool. If you don't have a debt tool, we usually start off with credit cards being our debt tool. We use a credit card, do velocity banking, knock down one card, jump to the next, knock down that card, jump to the next, your credit gets better, we apply for the P-lock, and then we start wiping out all the other different debts, okay?